Hey everybody, got another video here for you. Um, I guess you would say that this is guitar building news. Um, this is new stuff that's uh, coming to the shop, or I've come up with, and uh, I thought was worthy of passing along. So, got uh, four new design ideas, uh, four new kinds of parts, and uh, nine new tools. Um, handy but inexpensive tools for building guitars and uh, like share them all with you so stay tuned so first up design ideas uh, first one is a little bit more detail about this interchangeable pickup system that I keep talking about um, so the basic idea is these are all the parts you need in order to implement it you make a base plate out of uh, pickguard material and uh, and you mount a pickup onto it and at one end it's got like a clip thing that's also made out of pickguard material that it slips underneath and at the other end there's a hole like right here and you just wedge the pin in in order to hold everything tight and then the pickup is connected to the rest of the guitar with one of these little JST connectors, a five pin JST connector. And you use five pins so that you've got all four wires on a coil split humbucker, plus you have a fifth wire for the power on an active pickup. And with five wires, you've got enough wires to do pretty much every kind of pickup that I can think of. So, and the way it would work basically is you'd have a base plate that's about 100 by 40 millimeters and then your end pieces here that kind of a thing would be um, 10 by 40 and 15 by 40 and that would make your little clip and you use a couple of uh, pick guard screws down into the clip in order to hold it into the body you might be able to get away with just glue and then see then your base plate here slips underneath your clip and then your pin goes at the other end, right there. And so in 3D, it would look kind of like this. You've got your, this is your clip part here with your screws holding it to the body. And then this is the base plate and the pickup that slides underneath the clip. And then at the other end, you've got your pin, which holds this end of the, of the base plate in place. And then these clips or these connectors are really easy to put together and take apart. They've got, you've got two little squeeze them handles here and then one here. And so you just kind of squeeze it this way and squeeze it with that and they come right apart. And then they click lock together and they only go together in one direction. So, boom. So that looks pretty good. So you, the idea is you take whatever pickup you're going to put and you would, let's say you were going to build up a guitar that used this system and it came with a, a complete set of pickups. And I've kind of like made a tentative list of the pickups you might want to consider. So it'd have, you know, four or five pickups in a set in order to like cover all the bases, let's say. And so each one would come on a base plate and it would already be shimmed for the correct height for that guitar. So the only thing I still gotta figure out is if you can figure out a way to to do a, I suppose you could always route a channel underneath the base plate for the screws and then make them height adjustable that way. And then you could take one pickup on one base plate with an adjustable height and you could use it on any guitar at the bridge or the neck position or the middle pickup position that way. I'll have to work on it. That's last little kink to work out in the system. And also making sure that the bridge pin is actually strong enough to hold things in place. Another way to go about it is you uh, put in an insert and a machine thumb screw and that would definitely work. But, um, yeah, so what you do is you set up, like, 
one of these for each type of pickup you want and then they've all got this connector on it and then the guitar is wired to take advantage of everything that every pickup in the set can do so it would if it had a an active pickup in the set then it would also have the the battery box on board the guitar and that would be hooked up to I suppose the red wire or something and uh, and it would and these connectors would be connected up for doing coil splits and things like that and then for each pickup you just hook up the appropriate wires if you had a if you had a coil split splittable active pickup you would use all five wires and they do now make that EMG makes them now um, you would have all five wires otherwise you'd be using like four for a coil splittable humbucker or you'd be using two for a single coil and the reason why you actually use four for the humbucker is so that you have individual access to both your A coil and your B coil and that way you can do a coil split with doing your A coil or your B coil depending on whether it's at the neck or the bridge or you can do stuff like uh, one of those one of those five-way settings or a five-way plus a pull-way setting pull switch setting where it'll do like uh, what it'll do like the the A coil on the neck and it'll do the B coil on the bridge the two most outside coils or the two most inside coils by having four leads and having one coil on one pair and one coil on the other that gives you the maximum versatility and then of course at this end you simply wire the guitar so that it can do everything under the sun no matter what you plug into it and that's going to give you the max everything except for you still can't do a you still can't do a, a hot active pickup and a tele bridge pickup at the bridge because of that ashtray thing. I've got to figure that out too. Someday. So this thing here, this is a list of like all kinds of pickups that I know of. And just very briefly, you've got single coils, humbuckers, gold foils, filtertrons slash supertrons, piezos, actives, lipsticks, single rails, dual slash hot rails, uh, that's a single coil footprint, uh, quad rails like this thing, that's a quad rail, um, horseshoe pickups, Charlie Christian pickups, that's a, another bar type pickup, uh, mini humbuckers, and P90s and for the interchangeable pickups thing I was thinking that you would probably want to to cover all the bases you would want like a splittable humbucker of some some sort a gold foil a P90 a lipstick and perhaps an EMG or something else in an active pickup to start and that, that gives you five pickups and that'll give you a pretty good range of voicings because you can use the splittable humbucker to do your single coil stuff pretty much so and then the and then the gold foil and the P9 and the lipstick are all going to have somewhat unique voicings um, and then the EMG it's yeah active pickups are really kind of in a class of their own because they're like so clean and so quiet So the second new design idea is an improvement for this X6 type bridge, the, uh, the floating saddle bridge, which normally would have rollers and this is a leftover parts build. And the idea is basically you cut a channel in it so that the saddles cannot shift left and right if you see like this guy here he has a tendency to slide over this way a little bit in that direction it doesn't stay tight up against the rest and uh, which of course is going to 
mess with your string alignment over here. And the idea is you route a little channel or file a little channel in so that there's like some edges or walls that keep these guys in packed tight against each other. And then what you do is you actually center this block on the center line of the guitar to glue it down and you don't have the block floating. Like this is a floating block and floating bridges. And that way your tuners are lined. This guy's popped up the bridge. There we go. Yeah, that way your um your saddles are aligned left to right, centered on the center line of the body. And you can also do the same thing with the pickup. On this one, I first time I forgot to line it up with the string since this is floating, and lined it up with the body, and it was off. And uh, and then what you do is up here. Once you get up to your to your string alignment at the neck, then you can use your wiggle room and your neck screws in order to get everything to line up once this has already been lined up with the guitar center line. And that's going to be, that way you don't have to worry about putting the strings on in order to get like everything up here all lined up. You can just slap it down according to the center line and fix it in post, as they say, up at this end. But to do that, you've got to be able to make sure that the saddles stay together and centered on the center line of the guitar. And the way you do that is have some edges on the block. And so that's the second new design idea. But um, that's actually probably going to be a moot point because of the third new design idea. And I don't have an example. The part is on the way. But um, what it is, is on a multi-scale headless guitar, they have individual barrel saddle tuners with uh, thumb screws on the end. And I've decided, I decided to get a set of those for an X6 type build, where instead of having like either roller T or TOM or floating roller fender saddles and a block like this or this improved block that I just showed you and then like locking tuners instead of doing that and having the tuners let me get a real X6 Here we go. This is the X7 actually. It's an X6 with a vintage 5. It's got a filtertron on it. These are rollers here. Uh, same bridge as this guy, otherwise locking tuners once again. But you can see this guy's got the, the correct thing going on for straight string pull, no pins required, no vertical string trees. And uh, but what you do is you take this and this and you replace it all with those barrel tuners for, um, for a headless with a multi-scale, except it's not a multi-scale guitar, but so they'd all be lined up straight basically. They wouldn't be staggered, diagonal. And so what it boils down to is that it, it's going to make the guitar shorter and um, they're going to be higher ratio tuners. They string up differently, so locking isn't really, it's not a case of locking versus not locking because it's kind of apples and oranges since they string up differently. Um, the barrel tuners, they work basically like a Steinberger, but without the trim. It's more or less where you're at. Um, me personally, I think it, they're cooler, and they're only $35 more than this setup. Actually, maybe less once you add in the price. Once It might be almost a wash between the cost of roller saddles and locking tuners versus 
a set of those guys. I'd have to price it out, but but yeah. So so that's the next. That's the third new design idea is using um, headless multi-scale guitar individual saddle barrel tuners for um, X6 designs and losing the floating bridge or the, and the TOMs and the locking tuners all together. Which basically turns it into a Steinberger with no trim. And then the fourth design thing is um, dual humbucker setups versus using the EQ in order to get a neck pickup sound. And for a long time I've been saying that you can use an EQ to get a neck pickup sound out of a bridge pickup. And yes, you can, but um, you can tell the difference. And so I've kind of changed my mind. And so, yeah, um, I think that going forward, I, at, at least a two humbucker kind of a setup, I'm, I'm no longer going to say that a bridge pickup and an EQ is is good enough to do a neck pickup. You can fool an audience, but you can't fool yourself. So, yeah, uh, you really need a neck pickup. So, yeah, so going forward, a lot of the builds are, I'm going to start incorporating two pickups into the, into the builds. Um, obviously, it's going to take a little more thought from the get-go mostly about where to put all the switches and stuff that two pickups means you can do so but yeah so um eq still beats good old-fashioned traditional tone controls by a country mile easy 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 i'll take an active eq seven band eq a nice clean one like these guys these are all moon units i believe I'll take, uh, you know, like this over a regular tone control any day of the week, unless I'm trying to do something traditional. And, uh, but as far as like this being an acceptable substitute for a neck pickup, I don't really think so anymore. It's, it's, you can fake it. It's an okay fake, but it's, it's only an okay fake and nothing better. Um, me as a player, as a musician, uh, I'd rather have the real McCoy. So, yeah, I'm going to start putting the real McCoy on my builds. Okay, moving on to the cool new parts. You've already seen the first one here. It's these 5-pin uh, JST connectors. And, um, yeah, they're definitely cool for... Uh, hooking stuff up. I mean, you could you could take one of these kind of things. They come in like, you know, two pin, three pin, four pin, five pin, etc. And you could take this kind of thing and put it on a jack and then install the jack and then be able to do like plug and play for portions of your wiring harness. And that'd be an easy way to quick connect and quick disconnect a jack from like a, a pre-wired pick guard on like a a strat or something like that so yeah possible applications for this in guitar circuitry so the next cool new part is string ferrules um, yeah, this one yeah so this is the string ferrule we're all familiar with And this is a, a standard fender type string ferrule. And then, let's see, the first cool new interesting thing is CB Giddy has these shorter cup style ferrules for cigar box guitars but they're actually a wider diameter 
than a standard fender type ferrule. So these are 10 millimeter. So yeah, um, you'd want to use them like in a, if you're trying to get them equal string space, you'd have to do them in a, in a staggered row of three and then offset row of three. The same way that this has a row of six and a staggered offset row of six in order to get 12 with a straight string pull. And then let's see what else. Oh, they come in multiple colors. I got these for the diamond, which uh, I'm going to be working on here soon. But uh, they were too large as far as like for straight string pull it to not. Um, these show a lot of promise. These are compression fittings. And they come in a variety of sizes. These happen to be too big, but you can get them small enough that they'll work as string ferrules. And I think this really, going forward, would be the e-ticket ride for doing string ferrule stuff. It's got a little ridge or cup on it. I think there's actually one still... Yeah, this is what they look like when they're installed. So you could t get this and then uh, in the proper size you want something smaller. These are too big for a guitar string ball but you could put them going through from both sides as you can see these are just barely a press fit but yeah you you cut them off or get them get shorter ones I guess they don't make shorter ones so you take a pair of these and cut them off and glue them in from either side kind of an idea and you'd be able to get that kind of a thing going on which would be perfect obviously they'd have to be smaller ones and there'd have to be more space between them so that they'd all fit in nicely and stuff but yeah if you're going to be doing string throughs the headstock and this kind of stuff's just too big i mean you can get these i guess i'll leave that in there you can get these compression fittings really really small so if I were going to be doing more of these kind of things I'm going to be switching over to the barrel tuners I think and they use a little their own little lock nut kind of thing at the headstock which I hope will fit well for spacing if not I'm still using lock nuts so it can fan out a little bit behind the lock nut for the uh, for the string locks. Then let's see, um, these are the gold ones, more of the gold ones. Uh, this is the solution that I actually found for the um, for the 12 string tail tuner. These are 6 millimeter OD, 3 millimeter ID um, bushings, steel bushings. And so I've got two dozen of those on the way. That's half a dozen of them already arrived. And they'll be used in order to do this headstock. Because it was pre drilled for these guys and then I discovered these guys wouldn't work out. But yeah, basically the the big really cool part here, other than the fact that you can get cup style short ones if you need it is uh, the compression fittings when cut to the proper length and of a smaller and appropriate diameter could give you something really nice I mean these are brass they look pretty and stuff like that so yeah they could work really really good if I were if I had it all to do again and hadn't drilled the holes I'd plan for these probably Another thing I was thinking is you could actually get your own tubing and a flaring tool and make your own. And that might actually be the best way to go about it because then you can get exactly the size and length and amount of flare that you want. But then again, these guys are machined and press made so they get a nice flat flare on them. So, your decision. Oh, get another part in the ferrules game. These are electrical bushings, ferrules, electrical ferrules for like butt splice connections and stuff. 
and they come in all kinds of sizes. So this is another possibility, like this guy right here. That's big enough for a number six string, and it's too small for ball, and it's copper. And it's just a little piece of copper tubing, and you just slip that right into a string through hole. So that's it for interesting feral parts. Uh, let's see what's next. So this is uh, the Oriental Mark II, and at the moment this is the only example of the next cool new part that I can lay my hands on quickly. And this is the part right here. It's a thumb screw, machine thumb screw. Its size is it's a M4 by eight millimeter long, and the head size is ten millimeter diameter by six millimeter tall, and they're available on both Amazon and eBay and you can use them instead of the allen head screw on a lock nut and they're good up to at least a four semitone bend at which point it's questionable as to whether it was this or whether it was the Floyd Rose not coming back to zero that was causing it to go out of tune. So, uh, yeah, anything short of like a four semitone bend, and these work just fine to keep things tight at the top end. And that's the exact size you need. And I've decided to go back to using these things on lock nuts. And this is the next cool part. Uh, you might have seen an ad for these on YouTube. I saw them on YouTube and I got some off of Amazon. Uh, I think they're like 10 bucks for a small set, something like that, maybe less. It's uh, shrink wrap and it's got a little waterproof collar here at the end and then it's got solder in the middle. You show a wire in each end this kind of a thing all the way up to the solder like that two wires and then you would take a lighter and just heat it up and it would melt the solder connect the two wires heat shrink the whole thing and these little red parts are waterproof seals, which makes the whole thing a waterproof connector. So, yeah, pretty cool. And so I thought some, these might have, you know, use in putting together guitars, especially when you're trying to splice two wires together. That might be a handy way to go about it. So, see how that works out. And I think there's one more part. Yeah. One more. Okay, and here's the fourth and final cool new part. I had to go th digging through four boxes of parts to find these, only to discover them next to the cool parts box on top of the brush on poly can. On top of a gallon of brush on poly. They never quite made it into the box. I must have tossed them and missed. So, what these are, it's like a battery box, but no electrical connectors or wires or anything. And they're very small, about the size of a matchbox. And um, the idea is you can take this thing, and a lot of times the wiring on these guitars turns out to be like a kill button, on-off switch, a jack, and a pickup 
all wired in parallel together so you've got a whole bunch of positives coming together and a whole bunch of negatives coming together. And the idea is you can bring all your wires here and notch the box or drill holes in or whatever and bring all your wires together inside, make your connections, push them down into the box and then close it up like that. And you can either, you know, like mount it like this way. Let me get this thing back open. Come on. There we go. So you can either like, you know, screw or glue this thing onto the guitar, have all your wires come in, put some notches here, and then uh, just cover it like that. Or you can flip it over so that so that you've got the box mounted to the guitar, all your wires come in through little notches or whatever, and then you just put the cover on, and it looks like that. And that's the fourth cool little part to, uh, to share with you all. And now it's time to move on to some tools. First up, miniature rasps. Yeah, actual rasps. That's a that's a flat. They've got rounds and half rounds and triangles and stuff like that. And these are rasps, not files. Um, I think it was about ten bucks on Amazon. That kind of thing. Next up, uh, Crimson Guitars recently had a sale, and I'd been wanting a centering ruler for a while. This is one of their centering rulers and yeah it's got zero in the center and goes out to 150 millimeters in each direction and then on the other side it's it's marked zero to 300 millimeters so this has actually replaced my regular ruler for everyday work and it's got regular ruler on one side and centering ruler on the other uh, I believe the sale just ended, unfortunately, but it wasn't a very expensive piece. And it's all like, you know, nice and engraved and stuff like that. I also picked up the um, taper gauge. This is used for measuring the size of like, there's a headstock here, this will do. You can use it to measure like, the size of headstock holes and stuff like that and it's less fidgety than having to get in here with this thing and get it all straight and see my my lock there is in the way and stuff and yeah so so yeah you just take this thing and go whoop take a reading uh, once again not too expensive like everything for for like these quality tools, you you pay a little bit more, but you get a nice tool that's going to basically last you forever. So, and while I'm talking about crimson tools, they've got another one that I've actually found is like one of the best on the markets, and that's their uh, their scale, their fret marking ruler. Uh, what makes this thing so nice is that it's actually got four different scale lengths on it. And this, I believe, is the only one on the market that has four scale lengths. And, and the next best you can find is ones that only have two scale lengths. And yeah, so this has, this has um, 24 and 3 quarters, so that's a Gibson. 24.625, which I guess is another Gibson. Um, 25 and a half, that's a Fender, and 25 is a PRS. 24.625, that might be a classical, I'm not sure. And one last little thing I picked up from Crimson was their small round sanding stick. And yeah, you can see I've already used it on a build. And they are nice. Next up, Japanese pull saws. Um, six inch, 10 inch, 
10 inch comes with an extra blade and is two handed. And um, what is it? Uh, 14 and 17 teeth per inch on both of them. And uh, each of them was about $20 on Amazon. And uh, yeah, they work pretty nice. Next up, a cheap hand trim router. Um, the housing on the old one, on my old one, was busted, so I went shopping on Amazon as usual for a quick solution. And let's see, this one, nice things, it's got a totally clear base so you can see what you're doing. Comes with a complete set of routing bits, like nine bits or something like that, including ones that are like followings and roundovers and stuff like that. It's got all like the guides and such to go with it too, so. And uh, the whole kit and caboodle I think was like maybe 30 bucks, so not a bad deal. Next up is a handy tool for working with tuners. It's actually uh, a ratchet handle like this. I think you go for about 10 online. And then instead of this setup, get a 10 millimeter deep well socket for this sucker. And that way you can reach all the way down even on tall tuners and sap stuff on and off real quick and easy without messing things up. Next up is uh, the new replacement calipers I got. It looks like the battery just went dead or something. But, yep, but that's okay because it takes the same battery as a uh, guitar tuner. And let's see, it's good to uh, hundreds of a millimeter and it's got the little thumb wheel and it's got the lock. And it's got zero and absolute distance and it also does readings in inches decimal, inches fraction and um, millimeters decimal and 30 bucks on Amazon not bad you get the baseline kind of thing that like doesn't have the wheel and the lock and stuff and uh, doesn't have the accuracy or the fractions for like 20 bucks so not a bad deal and this is all like steel and heavy and hefty and takes a more common type of battery that's a big plus and last but not least is the little mini table saw and these really are nice um they come with like five different kinds of blades so you've got a, a fine tooth blade you've got a regular table saw type blade, um, you've got a tile cutting blade, uh, you've got a metal cutting blade, and maybe one other type, I don't recall offhand. Um, it's like a seven speed motor or something on it. And, uh, and it's got, you know, the push guide with the angle on it. And it's got calibrated markings for the fence and you can actually adjust it around so the thumb screws are not in the way of the fence. And uh, it's got a little guard on it. it um, the blade height is adjustable. The only downside being is that you can only crank it up to about 15 millimeters. So if you're cutting like uh, one by material or a three quarter ply or something like that, then you've got to do a pass and then flip it over and finish the cut from the other side in order to cut all the way through with this little thing. But um, it's great for doing um, like uh, uh, thin plywood pieces. It's great for doing uh, pick guard material and things of that nature. Um, I'll commonly use it on like one by material in order to zap out like a bridge block or or some stands for a for a pick guard a depth pick guard that kind of thing. So yeah, another nice little toy. I don't recall how much it is. They they're really not expensive. I've actually seen ads for these things on YouTube now. So yeah, check it out. Um, I 
got mine off of Amazon, I'm almost positive. Might have been eBay. I'm pretty sure they both carry them. And let's see, I think that's the last thing. Yeah. Now I get to play with this. And this. And this. But that's going to be a different video. So, until the next one, I've got to clean the bench first, I think. Yeah, I'll have to clean the bench first, but yeah. Until the next one, everybody, have a good one. Go make some sawdust. Hopefully you saw some, like, tools or parts or ideas that, like, you know, might be useful in, in, in your journey of guitar building, as they say. So, yeah, go make some sawdust. Everybody have a good weekend. See you all later.